Hey, what's going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this new unboxing and impressions video. We're gonna be taking a look at the official Pac-Man Birth of an Icon book that was sent to me by Cook and Becker. I have to give a big shout out to Cook and Becker because they recently got in touch with me about covering this book and I wanted to look at it for quite a bit. So massive shout out to them for sending it over to me so I could take a look at it and review for you guys and unbox, quote unquote. But yeah, man, this is an entire book looking at the history of Pac-Man, probably one of the greatest video game icons of our generation, again, of the 80s, all the way up to the modern day. Like, Pac-Man is massively important, massively popular amongst gaming aficionados and amongst pop culture in general, uh, because there's such a wide mass appeal. But the cool thing about this book is that not only looks at the overview of the birth of, you know, Pac-Man and his uh, cultural impact, but also a lot of, like, the visual material, a lot of the promos, and a lot of the artwork that has come out about Pac-Man ever since. Uh, in the back, it doesn't really have a description. Anything like in the back, it just has more artwork or the classic uh, side cabinet artwork of Pac-Man. But we're gonna dive into this. I'm gonna take off this, uh, what is it, this plastic and we'll just get right into this bad boy. But as I'm doing so, guys, let me know what's up down below in the comments section. Leave a like on this video. Tell me in the comments what other types of gaming related coffee table books and other books and material that you guys want me to look at here on the channel. So let's take a look at this, man. Let's dive right into it. We're gonna go straight head on. Now, I will be skipping over some sections, you know, that are, again, not getting too detailed into the book itself, but just to give an overview and my overall thoughts about it. Um, the classic board, classic Pac-Man board. This book came out this year. I should mention this was done for 2021. Uh, you could get it right now on the Pac-Man website. Or not the Pac-Man website. The Cook and Becker website. I said Pac-Man website. The Cook and Becker website. Uh, this, from my understanding, it even says it here, and I saw it on the packaging. This actually came from the Netherlands, which is nice. It's very, very cool. So we have a whole thing about this book, a little about us or about it, which is nice. And we just get right into this, man. A lot of classic promos, uh, photography images from the 80s, seeing people play Pac-Man in various different locations. One thing that I do love, and I've seen this at a couple barcades and other locations, the table that's like a, a Pac-Man or an arcade table that allows you to put like drinks and other stuff with it and just play a game while you're chilling out. Uh, massive impact, you know, amongst all types of stuff related to Pac-Man. Uh, outfits for some people, which is kind of goofy when you think about it. Imagine somebody just walking around like that nowadays. It probably wouldn't be that strange, but it would still be kind of funny, which is great. Uh, and then obviously table contents. And a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, we got to talk about a little bit about Japan. They called it Puckman originally, but the name was changed for probably obvious reasons. You probably have seen it in a couple documentaries of why they changed the name, especially with the arcade cabinets. Uh, but yeah, yeah, let's just get into this. There's a lot of uh, words in here, a lot of uh, text, which is cool. I could see here, but I love the large images. I like seeing large images in books like this. You know, again, this is like a, a weathered, rundown Pac-Man machine, but just being able to see these images in like large, large format, even stuff like this, like when you have words, I love it when books, especially history books on whatever subject, have large images and they have text, but the large image is complement of what's going on. And it's visually pleasing. I remember if you haven't already seen it here on this channel, even I looked at the Sonic the Hedgehog book that came out from Cook and Becker a while back. And it's the exact same thing. Only that one had more stuff dealing with Sonic the Hedgehog and a couple other promo material stuff. And this one, obviously we're getting into this icon. A lot of images, a lot of promo stuff, what was going on in Japan at the time. Ban or Namco, now these days it's known as Bandai Namco, but it was just Namco back in the day, uh, is the company that really put out the Pac-Man machines. Uh, then we get into stuff about Space Invaders, some of the other classic arcade games before Pac-Man, which is nice. Again, I'm skipping over some of this stuff just to get to some of the more cooler aspects we could look at. The full Pac-Man arcade machine, which is just called Puck-Man back in the day. But again, this got changed to Pac-Man because of the name Puck-Man, the whole uh, vandalism type of thing that could happen. Uh, we got some stuff for, involving Galaxian. Uh, it talks about a little bit about Star Wars here because this is 1979. Star Wars came out in 77, so obviously a lot of video games back then were influenced by a whole space theme because of stuff like Star Wars, which is cool. So you got games like Galaxian, Space Invaders, etc. Uh, we get a little bit more into some Pac-Man stuff. I love this. I love this type of layout where... Let me see if I can line it up a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Uh, where it has... Uh, different sprites and stuff of the game and just visual stuff to look at with the text it's organized neatly it all gets pretty in-depth from what I could tell again I'm not reading through it in full uh, it gets pretty in-depth about some of the information 
the design of Pac-Man. Design documents. We like to see design documents when we're looking at our history, which is cool. Uh, and I guess, again, pizza. I'm kind of like glancing over it here. Where it talks about how, like, inspiration of Pac-Man came from, like, a slice of pizza coming out. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Moving a slice or two from a pizza immediately brings to mind the story of Pac-Man's origin as told by the creator Tor Toru Iw it's Iwatanani. Iwatani. Oh, Toru Iwatani. Again, I pronounced it wrong. My, please excuse me. But, yeah. So, it gets into a little bit more about Pac-Man's design. A couple other things about the creation of Pac-Man. The ghost, specifically. These are neat scribbles, I guess you could say, from when they were actually creating the game back then. Then, some of the sprite docs compared to Pac-Man, where we get some of the different, like, sprite animations, which is nice. Let's keep going here. Kind of speed things up. Because, again, all this stuff is really, really nice. And this is the musical score, I believe, for the theme of Pac-Man. Yeah, this is for the opening of Pac-Man. This is the full music sheet uh, right out, which is cool. Then the board stuff, again, I'm going to start skipping through this a little bit more because I want to get into a little bit more of the other stuff that we don't linger on things too much. Oh, look, a little Popeye stuff. Little little things of Popeye. i got to read this because I know that some people or some things have come up about Pac-Man and, and Popeye, you know, very similar. Uh, here goes another promo. Again, there's that table. We could actually play the game like that. I'm trying to skip a little bit further ahead. Let's see more of this stuff. Again, I really dig how visual this book is. I love the images. The images, they, they fit on the page like they give room for everything else, but they're large enough for me to look at and actually kind of make out little details and stuff. Really nice full image here of my, uh, this guy's name is Masaya Nakamura. There. For product marketing, which is cool. Some early Pac-Man merchandise. Look at that. That, that. I believe, is that Shibuya? Or is that in the middle of Tokyo? Uh, it's the Studio Ada building. Okay, that, it's on my birthday, June 29th, by the way, which is pretty cool. They had a little giant Pac-Man board on the screen there. So let's skip further ahead because we want to get a little bit more into stuff so you can see the rest of the book here. I don't want to linger too much on everything else. Look at this, these arcade machines. Pretty nice. There, Stan the Man. Wait, Stan the Man, who is this? Stan, Stan Jarofsky. Okay, uh, was it with crash box and stuff like that? Okay, yeah, cool. Again, I gotta read most of this stuff to know the specifics of it, but I'm pretty sure those of you who like Pac-Man that are really big into Pac-Man overall, uh, you'll be able to really kind of like know a lot about some of the stuff I'm kind of glancing over and understand a lot of the history of it. Let me keep going here. A lot more images. A lot of stuff. Again, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of information, but it's presented in a nice way, which I appreciate. Okay, but let's kind of skip over. Let's get into more the other stuff. Because I know once you get more into the 80s and you start getting into stuff that was going on here in the United States, then we start getting into stuff like Billy Mitchell, of course, which was a big deal, obviously, for the Guinness Book of World Records. And not so much these days, but back then, a really, really huge deal, especially with uh, presenting gaming in the mainstream. Can I keep going here? Dealing with Mickey, dealing with Midway. <laughs> okay, I, again, I got to read a lot of stuff. Okay, so here we go. We got some boards, or at least some... Uh, knockoff boards i could i guess you could say uh, look very similar to pac-man <laughs> it's funny no copies accepted look at that it's just like a straight up copy of pac-man that is pretty funny i gotta read that it's pretty pretty goofy oh uh, let's keep going here uh ch -ch -ch. pac-man fever okay so now this is where we start getting into when pac-man really hit its popularity start seeing a lot of different peeps in here let me see if i recognize any names in here not so much but there's a bunch of people in there a lot of different stuff. What I do remember, I will say, I don't know if you guys can really make it out here. Let me show y'all. You see this right here? That's the Pac-Man board game. I actually had, when I was younger, okay, because it, from my older brother, because my parents got it for him, the Pac-Man board game was a game that act like these little kind of uh, color-coded Pac-Man that you could use on the board to get all the different dots, and they had the ghost uh, stuff there, and you would collect the dots on the board, and whoever had the most when the entire board was clear was the winner. That I had, and that was apparently a big thing here in the States. All the different merchandise, a lot of the modeling, you know, for some of the different uh, apparel of Pac-Man. A lot of classic 80s, I guess you could say, fashion stuff that was going on. Very, very auteur. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I'm getting some more of this stuff. Obviously, the cartoon of Pac-Man. I remember seeing this, you know, the, the cartoon that ended up coming out. I believe this, yeah, this is the, no, this is the, yeah, the Hanna-Barbera cartoon. I remember seeing stuff about this when it came out. Uh, again, even though it was still way before my time, I still saw reruns and stuff on TV randomly, too. Classic Pac-Man artwork of the side arcade cabinet. A lot of Pac-Man artwork, a lot of different individuals who were involved uh, at some of the company, uh, Namco at the time. Look at this. Look at Pac-Man riding a, cor what is it, a Corvette. 
What is it? Just some random car? No, just some random car that just suspected. It would have been cool if it was like a brand name car, though. It would have been pretty dope. Oh, we got Pac-Man comic strips. Pretty awesome. So, just on these first impressions alone, I will say that if you're a classic gaming or retro gaming fan, and you just collect a lot of different stuff related to old uh, arcade games and stuff, this is a pretty cool pickup. I'll definitely admit, a very, very cool pickup that has a lot of history, a lot of, uh, what is it, visual material. Look at that, the Atari 2600 Pac-Man, which is pretty much one of the worst ports ever, especially for this game. But I had that. I had that because I owned an Atari 2600, so I was able to play that version of Pac-Man. Look at that, even the, the marketing stuff like really kind of was not representative of what the actual game was. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying... If you're a fan of classic gaming stuff and you just collect a lot of retro game stuff, this is a good pickup. Now, if you are not a fan of Pac-Man, of course, I do have to say that this probably will not be for you. Look at this. Pac-Man and culture expired by Pac-Man. Look at the type of fashion it is, is this. This is pretty wild. And of course, we got obviously Mad TV cartoons or uh, was it political cartoons and all types of stuff. I'm mad. That's pretty cool. Very, very cool. Look at this. The kill screen, which I guess they get into talking about the stuff with the world record for Billy Mitchell, as well as also just some of the other people that have broken the world record. I'm trying to glance through it now and they talk about what the kill screen is, or the glitch screen, the glitch level, but it's a kill screen. Basically, it's the end of the game. Pixels, when this movie came out, the movie was not that great, but it was very cool to see stuff from like classic video games into here. That was pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, man, just overall, like I said, here's the pack. Here's a better look at the Pac-Man arcade game. Not an arcade game, a uh, board game, I should say. I had this as a kid. You could see like the different colored uh, Pac-Man, the actual uh, pellets that you pick up. They also had the little uh, ghosts, which, or no, they do show them on there, they're yellow. But I remember them being blue in the one that I had. Could be a different one. Then there's also the magnetic Pac-Man game, which you just collect the different fruits, which is nice. A lot of different toys and stuff. This is the type of stuff I love to see in these types of books, where we get a good up-close look at some of the merchandise, at some of the promo material, the collectibles, the things that you don't see anymore. Look at this, Pac-Man cereal, Pac-Man SpaghettiOs. Oh my goodness. Such good stuff. What is it, a book for Pac-Man? I've seen Mastering Pac-Man before, that book. That's been mentioned in a bunch of different documentaries. A whole bunch of stuff. This is the stuff I love to see, man. I love this type of stuff. But anyway, the book goes on and on. So, like I was mentioning before, if you're not a fan of Pac-Man, if you're not into retro game stuff, this is not going to be the book for you. This is not going to be the pickup for you. Ooh, a Gameology? Oh, so they got a listing of all the different Pac-Man games on here. Starting from the 1980s, the original Puck-Man or Pac-Man. Then we got the Sega Genesis Pack attack Then they got Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures, which I own. I have that on Sega Genesis. And all the other Pac-Man games, Pac-Man Worlds. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. And I wonder, does it go all the way up to now? Because, again, I'm seeing the 2010s. I'm guessing it goes all the way up to 2021. Because that would include Pac-Man 99. I've played something like this on a large, the world's largest Pac-Man board. I've played this at a Boomers before. Or a, a Dave & Buster's. That, that is a lot of fun. Pretty sure a lot of me should turn the page. Which year are we up to here? This is 2016. The 2020s. So, so, yeah, we are going to go all the way up. Pac-Man Party Royale. But it goes all the way up to Pac-Man 99. Perfect. Okay, so it's a nice, good overview of Pac-Man from, from the 1980s all the way up to now, uh, including Pac-Man 99, which is nice. And then we get all the other image credits and stuff, and there's not much else really to see. That will probably, again, I'll probably look at this, you know, off camera and stuff, which is pretty cool. It gets a little bit wordy, and I guess this is all the indexing stuff. But yeah, man, that's my look overall at the Pac-Man... Birth of an Icon book from Cook and Becker. I say this is a good book, but only specifically for people that love Pac-Man, that love retro video games, and also people like me who collect gaming art books and coffee table books that uh, want to add on to their collection. So, regardless of my thoughts about this book, however, let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments section. Tell me, are you a big fan of Pac-Man? Do you love gaming coffee table books? Do you like retro gaming in general? Talk to me about that stuff and suggest any other types of books and uh, other products that you guys want me to feature here on this channel. That being said, I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. Thanks a bunch for watching the video. I really appreciate it a ton. I'll have more videos for you to enjoy here on the side that I know you'll love. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon too. Don't forget to visit my Patreon linked below for early access to new videos every week and join the Discord server too. It's linked in the description box below. You'll definitely love being a part of it. Thanks again, peace out, and stay epic everybody.